Let's make a minimap here. You can see we have a minimap in the bottom right corner. Our player is represented by an icon. These NPCs have uh, some icons to them as well. And generally, this is just an easy, quick to set up and fairly flexible minimap system. So let's get into it. We're here in an empty project. If you want the finished project, as always, for YouTube members and patrons, there's a link down below in the description to download if you're a supporter of the channel. It does help out a lot allowing me to make more of this type of content. Otherwise, let's jump right into it because we're gonna need to make a couple of things. I've already imported a couple of images here. These are images that have a alpha channel, uh, all of them. Uh, these were generated by ChatGPT. Obviously, if you're making your own game, you're likely gonna have your own images instead. We're gonna use those in a second. First, I wanna make a new asset altogether alongside those. So we're gonna make a new texture and render targets which we'll call something like rt for render targets minimap this is going to be a texture that we update live on our gameplay to show our minimap you can change the size of it to something like 512 512 if you want to 256 is probably a good enough resolution 512 is just a little higher i probably wouldn't go over 512 by 512 for this because it's going to be relatively small on screen anyway but if you want to do still look good on like a 4k screen as well 512, 512 might be worth doing. Then how are we going to like populate that texture? How are we going to set that texture to actually show something from in the world? Well, we're going to go into our blueprint uh, character that we have here, and we're going to add a new component to it, the scene capture 2D components. You'll see that that just effectively adds a new camera. So we're going to put that camera on a 90 degree angle, and we're going to put it up above the character a little bit. Don't put it up too high, you might be thinking, but I wanted to like see a lot of stuff, so it needs to up, be up very, very high, right? No, 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 you actually want it to be fairly close to your character. We're going to make it show a wider field of view in a moment in a different way. If you keep it close to your character, so you might even like want to keep it even closer like this, it will still be able to show you everything when you go to like an indoor area, because it won't be obstructed by the ceilings of the rooms that you're in. If you put this very high up, you're just going to see the outside roof of a house that you enter, for instance. So keeping this fairly close to your character is probably the preferable way to do things. Now, we can scroll down here. We see a lot of post-processing. We'll get back to that in a moment, maybe, or not. Then we get to the scene capture stuff. We set our render target to the render target that we just made. And now, this is going to, during gameplay, update that render target to show what this camera sees so we can see that if we open up this we now have a view of the top of our character so let's actually start making the material that is going to use these textures to show us our minimap and we're going to do that in here we make a material called m minimap and this is going to be a fairly straightforward material but you'll have to pay a little bit of attention here to set everything up so first and foremost, the material domain, of course, is going to be user interface because we're going to be displaying this in the UI. The blend mode, we're going to set to masked because we want this to uh, use the circular outline that we have. And then when we have those two things set, we're going to drag in our border image that I generated and then also the render target that we just made as to texture samples. A render target for all intents and purposes works the exact same way in a shader as a normal texture would. It's just a normal texture that gets updated every frame. So it's effectively just a video texture that gets generated in engine. For testing purposes, it's good to set your final color here uh, to white. So we can actually see in the preview what is going on. Because we're going to need to set this opacity mask. We're going to do that based on the alpha from our border. So we're going to be adding something to that. And we'll be adding a radial gradient exponential. To that now that will create a situation where we have stuff going over an alpha of one we don't want that since we're adding two things together we want to take the average of both so we're going to be dividing it back by two and that's going to go into our opacity mask which will show you the shape of our borders alpha with a circle inside of it now we need this circle to grow to actually fill out the entire border the way that we're going to do that is selecting the output node we just type in mask and we find this opacity mask clip value and we just lower that a little bit let go and you see the circle will start growing 
so we lower it a little bit more until it's one solid thing so now we have the alpha the opacity mask for the entire thing now we just need to decide hey every single one of these pixels that are white at the moment which ones are going to show with this texture and which ones are going to show our render target and for that we can use the if node so we're going to be comparing the alpha of our border and then the b value is going to be a hard-coded 0.05 you might want to fine-tune this a little bit based on your specific border image i find with the image that i'm using here about five percent opacity is a pretty good cutoff point so what are we going to do here if a is greater than b that means that our alpha is greater than five percent that means that we want to display the actual pixels from this image otherwise we want to display the image from our scene texture or our render target so everything that is see-through in here is going to display our render target instead of nothingness and if we put that into the final color we can see that that combines into the very thing that we want a top-down view with that border image applied on top of it so that's uh, pretty much everything we have to do for this shader uh, you can of course add in whatever else you want to do fancy stuff with this if you have like creative ideas but this is the basic ID. So now let's go ahead and make a user widget to add to the screen uh, to actually show that stuff as well. So we make a widget blueprint, user widgets, WBP, minimap, HUD. And this is simply going to contain a canvas panel. You would probably add this to the basic HUD of your like whole game, which might also, ha also have things like your health bar and that kind of stuff. And we just add a image into that. This image I like to put at a size of 256 by 256 because this image that we have here is all going to be represented of a 1920 by 1080 screen. So this is a 1080p screen as reference. Our render target is 512 by 512, meaning if the screen resolution goes up to 4K, we still are using that resolution from our render targets and we probably don't need to worry about like supporting anything that's significantly over 4k uh, so this way our resolution actually gets used if you don't care about supporting 4k uh, you can decrease this a little bit to gain a little bit of performance back or of course just make this a little bit smaller anyway i'm going to uh, set the anchors for this so that it scales properly with different resolutions there's pretty much good enough and then in the appearance in the brush for image we're going to just put in our minimap material and just like that we have our widgets which means that we can go back into the third person character into the event graph and on begin play we're going to create a widget and that widget is going to be our minimap hud and we will add that to the viewport and that's uh, the basic setup here so now if we go play the game we can see we have a very ugly uh, minimap at the moment it's very badly distorted because it has perspective it is way too close to our character uh, it even rotates with the rotation of our character which is very very weird so there's a lot of stuff that we do need uh, to fix up the first thing most importantly is we're going to go back into our scene capture component going to scroll all the way back up to the camera settings and we're going to change from perspective to orthographic you'll immediately see that our field of view increases by a lot because it's entirely gotten rid of the perspective so where perspective cameras work by creating a cone of vision orthographic cameras just make a square and say everything within this square doesn't become bigger doesn't become smaller as like the distance increases or decreases everything within this square is what i see so it gets rid of all perspective the other upside of which is we can make a very wide field of view without either having to distort our image or without having to put our camera very high up so as i mentioned before if i now add in for instance a little bit of a ceiling here and i walk under it you can see the shadow of this ceiling uh, that i just created but you can't actually see the mesh itself because the camera component or the scene capture component is under it so it doesn't see this mesh if this was the ceiling of a house or a roof uh, that i'm under i can still see what's going on inside the house around me as a result which is quite nice 
I'm going to get rid of it again because it's still fairly ugly. Now, there's a handful of things uh, that we still want to change. Number one, we don't want that thing to rotate with our character because that's very, very nauseating, honestly. So our scene capture component, we simply go into its rotation and set it to world rotation. And just like that, that issue is fixed as well. So now it doesn't rotate with our character and we can actually like kind of see what's going on and where we are going. But to see where we're going a little bit more, we probably want to add those icons that you saw in the demonstration at the beginning of the video. Uh, the way that I like to do that, and for this I'm going to put the scene capture component up just a little bit higher, <laughs> just to create a little bit of room. I like to add in a plane and make sure that that's not a chart of the scene capture component itself. I want to make it a chart of the mesh components. Make sure that that plane exists above our character, but below our scene capture component. And then we're going to make a material to display these icons. So I can just click on this and create material. And we'll call this uh, icon. We'll make this a masked material as well. And then use the alpha to go into the opacity mask. And that's essentially like instantly a good material. Uh, to make this reusable, I like to put this uh, as a texture parameter. This will be the image uh, because that way we can make material instances of it. So this will be the MI for material instance, player icon. And then we can copy that over real quick uh, to instantly also make the NPC icon. And now if we make sure that we actually apply this so that it knows that this is a, a parameter, we have this parameter in here now, global texture parameter. We can change that to this and it changes this material now. So that just helps uh, a little bit. And now with those materials made, we can use player icon and set that as this thing's material. And we'll see that we have that icon above our head now. You rotate it into the right direction. You can make it as big as you want it to be. Uh, but of course, you don't want to see this within actual gameplay. That would be kind of weird. So you can actually just type in scene and set this thing to visible in scene capture only. And just like that, we now have this visible in the scene capture only. It does cast a shadow within the scene capture. Uh, so you do also go in and look for shadow and turn off casting that shadow uh, so that you don't have that weird uh, shadow in there. That being said, you probably want this scene capture uh, to not have any shadows to begin with, uh, maybe, because it looks a little weird as a full-on camera view with like everything to do with shading. You can even see your player character shadow under the icon still. So that's not amazing. Let's go back into the scene capture components to fix that. Because uh, we stopped looting for shadow. If we scroll all the way back down to our scene capture uh, category here, we can set this capture source from scene color to just using the base color in RGB. That will show you the base color of everything without it being shaded. So that instantly makes it look more like a minimap and less like a render of the level itself. Now, I can still see my character under it, so I probably uh, want this plane to just be a little bigger. It's a little annoying because I set this to only be visible in the uh, scene capture, so it's not even visible within this view either. So we have to make it visible again, uh, like increase the size a fair bit, and then we set it to visible within scene capture only to update its size. And now it's probably a little too big. Uh, you can just try to eyeball it without actually seeing it if you are confident in it, but I am not. It's a little bit of trial and error to see what the actual like proper size of everything uh, should be, but that's up to you to like play around with. And at this point, it's as easy as just making a like different blueprint. So I'll make a BP and PC, which is effectively the same thing as the player, but without any code. Doesn't need the scene capture, doesn't need the camera at all. So we can delete those things and we can just go into this plane and set it to use the NPC icon instead. Putting a couple of those into the level with different rotations, you will still see uh, one small issue that is relatively easy to fix, uh, but these things will now have their rotation from the world in their icons as well, which is obviously maybe not ideal. So we can just go back into this plane and do the same thing that we did with the scene capture component before. And that is going into the rotation and setting it to world. 
Now, it might still align them uh, wrong initially, so you might need to like go in and see it's 90 degrees rotated. So we just rotate this 90 degrees to the right, I think. I might have rotated it in the wrong direction. We'll see in a moment. Yeah, I rotated them properly. So now these are always like the right way up, which just makes a little bit more sense on a minimap. Even if these guys were to walk around, because they're just a component that is on the character, uh, the icons will also walk around on the minimap. If I want to increase the size of my minimap or the field of view that my minimap has, all I have to go is scene capture component 2D, ortho width, I want to set that to like 2500, looks a little bit better to me. And you can see that I have a much wider field of view now, which makes it instantly feel again a lot more like a minimap. Now that we don't have shadows, I will doubly prove to you that I can make a ceiling for like my houses or whatever that I'm in. The minimap doesn't show it because the camera, the scene capture component, that's generating this minimap exists under this block. If I were to go up high enough at some point, it will start seeing it, as you can see. If I go up high enough, it suddenly uh, starts seeing it because it is at the proper height to start seeing it. So with all that, you have a pretty robust minimap system that kind of like takes care of itself in a lot of ways. You can expand on this a little bit in different ways that you want because you can uh, add post-processing to this. So that's either just adding some post-processing flair in color grading, color correction, or in making entire post-processing materials specifically for your minimap. I do want to point out if you're going to use a post-processing effect, uh, you want to come down into your scene capture again, and you need to set the capture source to being one of these final color ones because final color will include post processing obviously uh, scene color is only the color of the scene and base color is even less than that it's just the base texture colors of everything so if you're going to do any post processing you want to set it to one of these final color options and that's the basic setup for a minimap that you can do in unreal engine again if you want the project files they're down below for supporters it helps a lot with creating this type of content so it's highly appreciated if you do have a few bucks to throw my way on Patreon and you get the project files as a result of that. And a very big thank you to all my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help support the channel or get any of the project files in any of my tutorials, there's a link down below to the Patreon page to support me or alternatively as a YouTube member. And a huge thank you to my Cave Big Brain tier supporters, which care more for coding than impulse control, Earl Monserville Erno, my Cave Students tier supporters, Paul Berry and Oiku, and my Cave Digger tier supporters, Mauricio Perias.